and welcome to the Total Clarity Podcast. I'm Jesse Hyatt. And I'm Mike Varley. And we are in Staten Island right now. <laughs> we are. We're giving you a little sneak peek into what the next month is going to look like. But we're going to be talking about last week in Uptown Manhattan. That's right. We got so much going on. We just moved into the location that we're going to be staying at for the next month. We're excited to tell you more about that as it happens, but it makes for kind of a hectic week to move and record a podcast at the same time. So Right. So if you're are. just listening, then I guess you won't see the video. But if you're watching, then what we're talking about from Uptown Manhattan will not line up with what you're seeing at all, but you'll have a nice little visual and you'll get to see us walking around a spot in Staten Island that is brand new to us as well. So uh -huh. we're all seeing it together. I did record some uptown footage, so you will be seeing that as we talk about it. Oh, I it just won't that. be explicitly one to one. Oh perfect. What is okay. one to one is the lovely Staten Island footage and Jesse's face and new smiley face mask. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first episode we've had in a few weeks that doesn't have a guest on for us to interview and talk about the route with. So it's kind of a throwback to July. <laughs> right. And we you know Jesse and I have been talking a lot about exactly what the format looks like for the podcast. And each week it's changed a little bit. You know, we have some episodes where we sit in the gold room and talk about things. We have some episodes where we sit in the gold room, but there's footage from the walk that's over the whole thing. We've had one episode where we walk and talk at the same time. That's kind of a little bit what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But even this maybe is a little different. We don't have a guest. Mm. And and then we've had some where we have a guest and we're sitting in one place outside. Yeah. And I think the big thing to talk about as far as formats that we'd be interested in hearing anybody else's opinion on as well is we when we do the two of us, typically we kind of go over the route, not in a beat by beat fashion, but we use the route in order to serve as a skeletal structure for the podcast itself. And it reminds us of different things that happened as we go. And the past few weeks when we've had guests on, we've discarded that in favor of more of an interview style, which makes it so that the things that come up about the walk are more related to the experiences of the people we're interviewing. So this week is a little bit different in that we don't have a person to do that with now. And we're not going to do the beat by beat that we've done in previous weeks and see how that goes. Yeah, so let's, let's see how, like, what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this week, this past week, the beat by beat is not even really possible because it's different from when we were walking in Queens where we had a very specific route that we were following. And that was partially because Queens is a big old borough and we wanted to make sure that we were seeing the areas that we had lined out for ourselves and then also there's no easy public transportation option in Queens to get back home so we wanted to make sure we were able to go doorstep to doorstep and be right on that 26.2 miles whereas in Manhattan we were taking the subway to get well when we were uptown we were taking it both directions and then you're uptown and it was more easy to sort of wander around and know that as long as you get down a little bit further south you can we're gonna have to hop on a train to get home anyway so there's so many options of which train to take and that allowed us to just sort of be more casual about 
where we turn and which exactly which streets we go on and and whatnot yeah yeah the the nature of manhattan being tall and narrow makes it so that uh, the, you know you can kind of hop around on these routes which aside from the the grid walk which kind of felt like a a particular test to do it so stringently. Yeah. The other walks allowed for just wandering around and relying on the pedometer to get our 26.2 miles in. And then from there, uh, yeah, just kind of experiencing things on a day-to-day -day basis. I will say I'm looking forward to going back to the loop structure for this month in Staten Island because it is just a different mental place to be in to have to have places that you're going to each day change every day versus having a strong understanding of how much longer a given day is and just turning that part of your brain off the discernment and and if you go to a certain place and then it ends up being less mileage than you thought it was then it becomes a little bit more of a struggle to the for the rest of the day and it yeah it just kind of takes out the I don't know that that I find that to be incrementally taxing on the brain mm. so yeah I, I feel mixed about it I'm Part of me feels the same way as you, Mike, that it'll be nice to just know exactly where we're going each day. But then I also did really enjoy being able to just wander and, you know, pick our own adventure every day. And especially, I think in Manhattan, because I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the city being able to go down streets that maybe I've never gone down and really explore neighborhoods that either I knew really well or didn't know really well, but had walked through. Whereas now that we're out on Staten Island, I don't know anything about this borough at all. So following a route will be perfectly fine because every single street will be new to me and it'll sort of allow us to do a little bit of repetition, which will allow us to feel like we know something by the end of each week. Right. But I guess on that same note, of the four walks in Manhattan, this past week was definitely the area that I knew the least about or had spent the least amount of time in. I When I moved to the city, I lived in the East Village, and then I lived downtown, and then I moved to Brooklyn, and I'm, I guess I've had a couple of friends that have lived north of Central Park, but I haven't had a ton of reasons to go up there, and so getting to walk around Harlem and Washington Heights was cool. It was nice to sort of feel what the vibe was there, and then there's also a bunch of green space north of those neighborhoods. Yes, there was. I mean, I would say that the uptown area is quite green in yeah. all sorts of areas. Not just the parks that are available on the interior, but all along the waterfront has numerous green opportunities. There's basically a, above 125th or 20th. So it goes all the way to Riverside Park on the west side. And then there's what I believe is Riverbank State Park, I think. Right. I don't know if it's State Park, but it's definitely Riverbank something, which is cool. It's like an elevated park. Yes. That has an ice hockey rink. And I think there was a pool up there and basketball courts and tennis courts and sitting area 
like the equivalent of maybe four or five city blocks? Yes. Yeah, I would say about that. It was a very built out kind of wreck space, essentially, that was, I don't know if this is true or not, but it was built on top of a toxic dump or something. Right. Our friend, uh, well, I guess we shouldn't give it away, but one of our most recent guests <laughs> shared that fun fact with us. But in case it's not right, I don't want to tell you which guest it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Protect the guest and not yeah. the information. Yeah. yeah. So they, yeah, it may well have been built on some sort of debris situation. You can't say for certain. That might just be an urban legend too. But nevertheless, it is raised up from the shoreline. And that was the speculation as to why it was built that way. But it creates a unique and fairly dramatic situation where you can see the George Washington Bridge and, uh, you know, there's a lot of families there hanging out. And I imagine if it wasn't like COVID time, it would be even more thriving than it was. Yeah. But as it stands, it definitely seemed like a cool place to spend the day. Yeah, it was like a comfortable level of people hanging out there. Yeah. And then after that, we had... So up from above there is, I don't know if it's technically Riverside Park or not. It's unclear from the maps, but it ostensibly is a continuation of Riverside, except it doesn't have kind of the upper promenade area that the Upper West Side section of Riverside Park has. Right, right. So, it's just right on the water and right. more about the like one or two paths, biking and walking paths, and then some sports courts and um, green space, like grass, grass to sit in. And then there's the Little Red Lighthouse. That's right. The Little Red Ride Lighthouse, which sits right under the George Washington Bridge. That was something that we had visited previously when we were doing our test walk right back in October and so yeah we had some experience with it and I think we went to it every day I, I yeah. don't believe there was a day where we didn't it's just a really I mean some days we just walked right by it and then other times we sat there for a minute or two yeah, it's really pleasant there. There's some picnic tables and there's some rocks that people sit on. And it's right under the bridge and it seems like they were doing construction a couple of days on the bridge maybe, which, um, you know, makes it ever so less pleasant. Right. But <laughs> even with that, it's, it's just open and airy and you can see, I don't know what it is in Jersey it, that's a big rock formation that you can see right on the other side of the river. Whatever that is, it's pretty. Yeah. We're not exploring Jersey this year, so I don't need to know what that is. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty to look at from Manhattan, which is what we care about at the moment. Yeah. So from there, walking up uh, from the lighthouse, you go to Inwood Park, which is the very tip of Manhattan. Yeah, the very top tip. Yeah, and that's a very nice park as well. Lots of greenery there. It is, I don't know, somewhere that you can really get lost in like trail wise, yeah. surprisingly. It feels like a forest. Yeah. There's lots of ups and downs, hills and staircases and yeah, it's really isolated and dense trees, really quiet, really pretty. Yeah. It sort of blows my mind that that park is in Manhattan. Mm hmm Yeah. For those watching right now, we are approaching the edge of Staten Island. <laughs> Lovely views of the city. The first thing we do when we come to Staten Island is get as close to the city 
as we can. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very it's hard. It's actually quite nice. Not to make Staten Island jokes for a whole month. I know. I guess we really shouldn't do that. It's just so ingrained in me to <laughs> shit on it. But um, we're here. I'm, and I truly am excited to be out here. I don't, like I said, I don't know anything about Staten Island. And so far, it's really nice. So yeah. far, we're seeing really nice houses. And it's quiet. And it feels like a nice neighborhood where we're staying mm -hmm. so we're, we'll talk about it more next week but i am i am excited to be out here yeah. but anyway back to last week uptown yeah so i don't know when we're all the way up at the top of inwood i actually had a hard time understanding which part was inwood and which part was then turning into the cloisters and then turning into Fort Tryon and the Columbia campus. It all seems to blend together. I think they're distinct parks and distinct areas. But for me, it was, there's paths that just go from one to the other. So you can kind of like wander and walk around up there for hours and just go from one to the one park to the other. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the Cloister Fort Tryon section is a distinct one. It has a much more hilly profile than the Inwood Park does. And it is quite a, quite a slog to get up. There's a stair section that you can take that I took one day when Jesse was at the studio. If you really want to get up fast, but you're going to be huffing and puffing on the other side of things. And then there's the more slow, easy sloping, I guess, car path or something, which we walked up uh, another day. Mm -hmm. And that but one- But even that is tiring. Yeah. This week was, I was more tired this week at the end of the day than any other day. Mm. We were doing, I guess, how many miles on the pedometer at the end of each day. And I guessed like 45 or 50 every day. Cause it was, it felt like that's what we walked. Yeah, it was not. No, it wasn't. It was 26.2. Yeah. But <laughs> it felt like a lot more just because of all the ups and downs of the hills. Right. So, and then we went to the Fort Tryon area. We actually, we didn't see all of that area, but we saw some really cool stuff around there. Uh, there's some like arched, I don't even know what you call it, but they're arched bridges, but not oh. quite bridges, they're just kind of like hallways yeah, or something. Yeah, it's like a big outdoor hallway. Yeah. Like stone arches and columns. Yeah. Would it be like a column, column nod or something? Yeah. They're very pretty, but yeah, as we're sort of talking about it now, I don't know if there's a purpose for those or maybe there was at some point. Maybe they were part of something bigger. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they were ornament or not. It's unclear. We're taking off our masks. We we're are, seated. We're seated. We're on a bench. I'm going to say this is, there's no other benches around us. This is socially distant enough, I think. Yeah, I think this is acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, I guess we're kind of backtracking a little bit, and that's fine. But there's this one part of our route that does travel along, what highway is that there? I think it might be the Henry Hudson. Okay. So it travels along the Henry Hudson and we're talking about these stone columns that are on the east side of the road, but then you can also walk on the west side of the road and there's another area where there's this structure, this column structure that looks over the river and it's so cool but I don't, I just don't know what it is. I tried to look on the map. I don't think it has a name and there's no way to get to it except for walking or biking. But it feels like a structure that you could have an event in that would be nice to have some, like a graduation party or something like that. But it, I can't imagine anyone uses it for that because there's, you can't drive to it. No. There's cars driving by on the highway very close by, but there's no like pull off or anything. Right. 
And I kind of love that. I love that it's like, I want to be able to use it as a car person also, but it's kind of, it's really special. It ends up just being a spot where bikers and walkers can stop to take a break and to stretch and drink some water and look out over the river. And it feels like a secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was an, it's a nice little spot. I took some pictures with the 360 camera there. So it was super fun to do that. There's some evidence of that on Instagram, if you're so inclined to check it out. And yeah, I, I was thinking about events there too. It's, I mean, you would, everybody would need to be able-bodied to walk there for one. Yeah. And then, I don't know if everybody would either have to not go to the bathroom or oh right maybe I didn't you could get that. maybe you could get a porta potty in there or something. I don't know how you would get it there. I don't know. I don't know how you get a porta potty anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think that there were any other places quite like that on this walk that were only accessible by walking. No, there were. Like what? Well, we haven't gotten there yet, but over on the east side, it was your favorite. I think it was your favorite part of the walk. There's a cool skate park uh, well, underneath yeah. the bridge that you can't get there any other way than walking. Yes, but it's like an eighth of a mile walk from the road. That's true. Right. And then this one was like, I don't even know how far, a couple miles probably. The one that we were talking about previously with the columns. Yeah. So speaking of the skate park, that was on the east side of the island mm -hmm. along the East River. And that had a different profile than what's going on on the west side. It was kind of at lower from 110th up, which is the confines of this particular walk, 110th Street all the way up to the top. Mm -hmm. On the right side, it's kind of in disrepair and not really, I think, fully actualized. I think it's being built. Like, I think it's new. I don't, I, I'm not positive, but I would say my belief is that it's, that the northern part of the east walkway is new. I don't. And so it's still being built and that's why it's empty. Mm, I think we might be thinking of different parts. Oh. Uh, there, there was in fact some new construction around the 120s, I think, for yeah. a park, which was pretty cool. But everything lower than that, I think, has been there a while. It's just in disrepair. Oh, oh, lower than that. Okay, maybe you're right. Yeah. So, like, we kind we went and tried to walk up the east side one day, and we just got to the river, and then immediately. Uh, it was just there was fencing up and the the walkway had fallen in and we had to go back over the bridge to you know continue elsewhere like it yeah was we not, had to crisscross over the what is it the fdr yeah multiple times and like we'd get five blocks up on the east side and then it would be stopped and we'd have to go five blocks back and crisscross over the highway and yeah 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 so, and then it just doesn't have anything for, I, I don't know, 20 blocks or so. Yeah, I that's think. true. Uh, as it, I think it's as the island tapers in is where it doesn't have access to, uh, to anything, any type of shoreline at this right. point. Right. But we, then when you get a little higher, there is another walkway that's really nice that is sort of like a big long park it's similar to riverside park are you you referring to high bridge park i believe right is what i'm talking about well so there's i think two very different profiles of high bridge park one of them is the one that goes alongside the river i would say that that is pretty sparse for a good deal of it just the ability to bike along it and there's some bridges that you go under and then it opens up at the end and there's some I, there's more space but there weren't a lot of people there no it was 
it kind of felt more like a like a tree grove in terms of how it was outlined and there like if you wanted to sit there it would be with like a blanket under a tree whereas on the other side of the park there definitely is a sense of more infrastructure i think on whatever the the other side of riverside park whatever we're calling it riverbank park or something um so but the highbridge park also is on the other side of the fdr drive or i guess it's the harlem river drive at that level oh when it gets yeah. a little higher okay yeah at the, there is all sorts of uh greenery that we'll get into in a second but then above that it's a steep shelf mm -hmm. and i actually walked that on friday by myself on amsterdam the amsterdam avenue and like otherwise like there's some there's a couple of other avenues like edgecombe avenue and whatnot that that trail the top part of that and that feels a little bit more like a morningside park where it's mm -hmm. like a walkway on where the like you know there you can see the nature kind of go off a cliff on the side and i think maybe that's why it isn't as built up because people have that to walk on and so like to go that extra step was just not something that to this point has been really like considered as much to get over to the other side of the highway yeah yeah well i guess it's also kind of because it, it's not, there's not a way to cross the highway all the time. Once you go over there, you're over there. Yeah. And then I guess if you're, like, if you're going on a long walk, like we are, it's great. It's nice to be over there. You know you want to walk the whole distance of it. But then maybe for the average person going on a short walk, yeah. that's too much to ask. Yeah. And then as far as the near side of that park area we went there a couple of days the first day on monday we went and we didn't know where we were walking into we thought we were just walking down towards you know the, just going back down yeah and it got the path got narrower and like denser with foliage and then all of a sudden we were just in an area where it's like oh wow where are we yeah we were just like chatting and walking and moving forward and all of a sudden we were under high bridge it was a, like a small space that was just covered in graffiti there was trash all over the grounds it was totally like isolated from you couldn't really see the highway anymore. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, is this like someone's house? Or like, like have we just walked into where someone lives? Or like, what is this? Or is it like where teens hang out? Like it, it was just all of a sudden, it was like this nice path and then there was like this under the bridge kind of vibe. Yeah, it, um, it was isolated to a level that you don't necessarily want to have it was not like it was an isolation that was like this is not good for a city it'd be one thing if you yeah. were walking around in upstate new york in that isolation you're like okay well nobody's here this type of isolation was somebody very well could be here and they might and not be happy that you're very here. well has been there many people very well have been there there was so much trash and so much graffiti um it was cool i mean in a way it was very cool yeah and what we found out as we we just continued to walk forward and this space was only like the equivalent of maybe one block yeah so it was like up a little area bridge area and then down some stairs and when we walked back down the stairs we thought we could get back on a path next to the highway so we started walking that way and then it just ended then there was just no more path and we were just like on basically had were on the highway and that wasn't going to work yeah so we turned around and realized that once we had gone down the stairs we could actually just flip around and we found ourselves under the other part of the bridge 
And that's where there's this massive skate park. Yeah. And that whole area under the bridge was also covered in graffiti, but a little bit cleaner as far as like trash on the ground. And one day we actually saw people from the parks department picking up trash and like cleaning it up. Um, and every day, except for I guess one day when you were on your own, there were a bunch of people skating and hanging out and it was great. It was such a cool spot. Yeah. Yeah. So I took a bunch of footage the day that I was by myself and it turned out that nobody else was there. And that, yeah, it's referred to as the Hamilton Bridge Skate Park. And it is so cool in terms of the graffiti that's there. And there's the bridge over top, like coming around in this circular pattern. Yeah. And like where, I mean, if anyone that's ever driven uh, to get up to like, I guess the Palisades to go out out of the city and you have there's that like circular part on harlem river drive like that part of the highway is right above the skate park yeah and but you can't see the cars because you're below it you can see the cars from like the lower part of that highway it's really cool yeah and so it is definitely also a place with uh that isolation energy we were speaking of earlier where you don't know if anybody is going to be there at any time. There's definitely a lot of people. There's two entrances. Uh, one entrance, there was a lot of people just loitering around. And presumably they have drug issues. I say that because there are needles everywhere. And the people were pretty dazed. And whatever, I, didn't, I wasn't hurt by them. They didn't like, you know, do anything to us at all. Uh, but that was definitely an area where, like, because of the isolation, I guess people feel comfortable hanging out mm. there. And then the other entrance in the park was that the other entrance that was not the weird entrance we took the first time <laughs> was walking down the exit of uh, like a highway. And when I was coming down from that angle, there was just a man at the top of a set of stairs just waiting there i don't know why what he was doing yeah. what he was waiting for he was just standing there in the middle of the day <laughs> no one around not even like this was past where the cars were coming it was very strange as well yeah so uh, it's that the park is i think honestly part of the allure of the park is there is this like danger element i guess where it's like you you have the perception that it's a little bit gritty i guess but yeah i didn't i, di I didn't really feel like genuinely threatened it was more just a you know a hair on the back of your neck type yeah thing. just like slightly uneasy yeah well like the first day when we walked through that first kind of like strange entrance i said to mike uh, do you want to wait to come back here till I'm with you again? I <laughs> or like text me when you're getting into this area and then tell me when you're out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cause it's not, yeah. Like it's just so isolated and that's kind of just like anywhere in a city when you know that there's millions of people in the city, but you are the only one for a while in this spot where no one else can see you. You're just, you, it, it just starts to feel a little uneasy because you start to feel like, what if this? What if that? What if someone shows up? You know, right. um, and nothing happened. Everything was perfectly fine. And all the people that were over there um, were mostly skaters or, like you said, people that maybe have um, an issue with drugs and aren't harm harming us or, you know, not to be scared of. Uh, it's sad to see that and it, you know, makes you feel uneasy because you there's nothing that we can do to help them right but um other than that there's you know nothing to be concerned about no maybe there's something to be concerned about over there yeah that little girl seems upset yeah so i think that really what there's one more thing i want to say about that area okay well, you made a 360 video, I which did. we anyone can check out. It's the 10-minute marathon about Uptown in 360. 
it's on our YouTube channel. And when we enter that sort of under the bridge area, the first part of it, when we were filming for the 360 video, there was a groundhog. That's right. And it was like anyone watching, you can see it was like this big. Anyone not watching, it was like, I don't know, 40 pounds. <laughs> I don't know if it was 40 pounds. It was a very big. It was a big. Boy. I don't even know if it was a groundhog. Let's be real. We don't. We well, presume I don't know what so. else it would have been. I don't know. Just a really hungry guinea pig. Yeah, it was or like a beaver or something. I mean, I it didn't have that type of tail, but yeah. maybe it was, you know, a clip tail. The tail was very strange as well. Yeah. It looked more like a pom pom than anything. But yeah, it was a big animal that it apparently lived there. <laughs> and Jesse was freaked out. I was, I don't, I was not freaked out. I I've was more just seen, like, you're big. What are you doing so big. here? Yeah. I've never seen a groundhog in New York City. Yeah. I've seen possums. I've seen raccoons. Yeah. But I've never seen groundhog. I didn't know that they lived here. Yeah. So. Well, they do. Add it to the list. Yeah. So much wildlife. Yeah. There, so that, I think that does it for the exterior portions of Uptown. Yes. I would say that if you are curious about nature and or you're a biker or something that definitely has a lot to offer yeah those those areas and yeah I definitely especially walking through Inwood Hill Park up there it made me think about how if people really are lamenting the lack of green area in New York City there you just have to go up there or you really just have to go to the extremities yeah. And honestly, like if there aren't, yeah, I, I you could live in any part of New York and there's probably going to be a fairly wooded area within a half hour of you. Well, I, I guess really we can where. say that about Manhattan and Queens now. We've yeah. seen enough of them in yeah. those two boroughs for sure. Yeah. We'll see what we can say about Staten Island at the end of this month. Yeah. Yeah. So far, there's wooded areas in the places we've been. Yeah. So, as far as the interior of Uptown goes, the... I had explained this analogy last night to a previous podcast guest. (laughs) (laughs) But... We were talking about, last week we were talking about how there's the gridded streets in the the middle of the city, and then there's the downtown streets, which are a little bit more labyrinthine and require human navigation. And I was trying to stretch this analogy to the very bounds of its possibility. And as far as the uptown side of thing goes, it started to create this picture to me that Manhattan is like a tree and we have the trunk in the middle of it with the the very gridded structure that supports and provides a circulatory system for the entire structure and then there's the downtown section which is almost like root like and it curls around and provides a base for the city and is the origin point of the city as it grew up. And then the uptown area from 110th up almost feels like the branches of a tree where you have some of the structure of the, the trunk emerging up into the top area. But then there are all these avenues that are just one-off avenues that are like uh, I said, I think it's at Edgecombe and, and Nagel. And Audubon. Audubon. I mean, they, they go on and on. I, I didn't take a list for the purposes of this analogy. But they, there is still a sense of structure uptown, but there's also these just like long shooting uh, as well. These, these, yeah, saplings or something, if you will. I will. You will. Yeah, oh, I like good. it. Yeah. And it is very green, and as it's we green. said. Lots of these all these there are a lot of parks that are long and 
I guess rather than, you know, trying to create workable blocks out of them, they were just like, all right, let's just leave them as is and have the rock formations be there and let it be green. Yeah. So, yeah, they're the, the, a lot of these just long parks that might be an avenue wide, but, you know, 15 or 20 blocks long. And then the profile of each of the long sides of the park could be very different, you know, to be either on top of it or on bottom of it, like Morningside, as I mentioned earlier. And, uh, and yeah, so I don't know. It's the tree that the big apple grows on. That's right. That's right. That's why the city is called the Big Apple. Exactly. Now we know. Now we know. And so, yeah, I mean, there, it, there really are a surprisingly small number of avenues that goes up and down, which Mm -hmm. is our primary means of getting around the uptown area. So most of the days we would spend the first hour and a half to two hours kind of walking on 110th or 116th or 125th mm-hmm. and any of the sub roads or sub streets within right. so we have you know like getting food like a juice or a bagel or something yeah and do you remember the name of the juice place that I got a smoothie from. It was I very good. I don't remember the name of that. I'm going to look it up. All right. So, so being around down there, there was, I mean, it's pretty lively there, especially on like 125th and 116th. We would take the train up to the 6th train, or the, the 456 line, up to 125th Street every day. And... Yeah, I mean, it was pretty lively there. Yeah. Each day, there was people being loud. (laughs) Yeah, not every day when we got off the train, but most, I'd say most days. Yeah. Like, as soon as we get off the train, it's like, okay, we're here. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think... It's kind of fun. It's kind of a fun energy. I noticed there were a lot of people that knew each other like one person that would be yelling across the street and another person to say hi and then they'd also be walking by someone that's dealing with their car and greet them and knows everybody's name and it felt very like even though it doesn't sort of feel like a neighborhood where everyone would know each other it doesn't feel like it doesn't look any different as far as the buildings or the way the streets are laid out than other neighborhoods in new york it did feel as when i was listening to people and noticing people it did feel like more of a neighborhood than maybe some of the other neighborhoods that we've walked through Mm. and what i mean by neighborhood is like mr rogers neighborhood like will you know friendly people that know each other as opposed to just something that is a group of blocks that's called a neighborhood because it's an area yeah i would say that the from like 110th to 130s up i think there is some distinct architecture that's going on that would make me feel like it has a different neighborhood Mm. sense i would say that i agree with what you're saying though as far as the general sentiment of people knowing each other and and yelling back and forth at each other. I would say after the 130s, then it gets more like harder for me to discern how it looks different from other parts of the city. North of 130? Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking 130s is fairly arbitrary, like somewhere between 130 and 140 is where it starts and also the, 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 the island starts tapering. Yeah, I think once it starts to get super narrow, yeah. it all just kind of, there's lots of big apartment buildings, there's lots of NYSHA houses, there's lots of condos that kind of look very similar to each other, and it all kind of blurs for me, honestly. And I think it's partially because it is just so narrow and there's only so many streets. You don't have quite as many side streets as you do in the lower part of the city. Yeah, yeah. 
or the lower part of Uptown. Yeah. But yeah, there's definitely a sense of loudness being a part of Uptown. Mm -hmm. And it's like loud, angry, loud, happy, loud, just loud, anything communication wise. And I think especially coming off of like the with the the Upper West Side area being so adjacent to it. It's just so quiet down there. Yeah. And so I, I just rigid. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't you don't really get the sense that there is that community aspect that you're talking about where people know each other as well. And, and they're, they're very well, maybe. Yeah. It's just that I don't I can't hear them greeting each other. And maybe they are. Maybe they're just doing it quieter. So I'm yeah. not noticing. Yeah. Well, I also think there's just a sense that it's not appropriate to be that loud mm. down there. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just feels like everything is so in its exact place in a lot of those areas. I guess I'm on, on both sides of of Central Park. It feels yeah. like that. I the kind of the loudness energy wouldn't seem out of place downtown, but it doesn't seem to exhibit itself as much. Mm. So yeah, so that was interesting. Yeah. To be uh, you know, an observer to this whole week. And it felt nice. It felt like so even, you know, I'm I, we went into this smoothie place called Rejuvenate Juice Bar. Yeah. And I think that the thing that you're saying about like loudness, it it just feels very like warm and friendly. Like we walked into this juice bar, it's just a tiny little place. The lady that owned it immediately greeted us like as if we were in there every day and like good friends. And I ordered a juice and she made two little cups, like shot glasses and paper cups of the juice that I ordered for me and Mike to drink before I drank the full smoothie, like to taste it and let her know how it was, I guess. And that was just sweet like that. I don't know. It's something about that personal touch and kind of sweetness that I think I experience more outside of the city mixed with the very clear urbanness of the concrete, the sidewalks, the the buildings, and the loudness that I don't associate with outside the city, but I do associate with being in the city. That mashup, it was, felt really good to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think maybe a lot of people have just lived up there for a long time. And so there is just a comfort and sort of like a sharing and like kindness with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, So another highlight for me of that area was Marcus Garvey Park. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. We only went in there once, or I only went in there once. Did you go one day when I was not with you? No. Yeah, so we only went in there once. um, And it was kind of right in the center of east and west. And there's a lot of stairs to get up to the top of the park. Mm -hmm. And then up at the top of the park, there's a fire tower, which was closed, but it seems like you could get a good view from up there. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's definitely a nice park. There was an amphitheater and uh, yeah, uh, there were nice houses uh, around the entirety of the park. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm glad that we got a chance to go in and see that one as well. Yeah. If you look at the park on the map, it looks like it's going to be small. But then when you get in there, it's actually quite spacious and nice. Yeah. There was another uh, neighborhood that was interesting. I think it was Hudson Heights. Yeah, Hudson Heights. When we came right out of Fort Tryon, mm. we unexpectedly like stepped out of Fort Tryon without even trying. And all of a sudden, it was like this one street town, yeah. almost, where it was like a pharmacy and a, you know, a, a diner and whatnot. And it's at the top of 
you know, a very high elevation area. And then there was a, a Bennett Park, I believe, and some really nice housings, like old kind of housing around there. And yeah, it, it's only for like five or seven blocks, maybe a little more, and then it's gone again. It like bleeds out into something else. Yeah. So. It almost felt fake. Yeah. Like it almost felt like we were in Disney World town or like <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah. Well, I think that might wrap it up for this week. Not for lack of enjoyment of uptown, but just for lack of things to say at this moment. We've had a very busy week. Now, as, as we mentioned, we're in Staten Island. We're seeing the sunset. We're on the wrong side of the sunset. But oh yeah, you can see from here, as I lift up the camera, the waning hours of lower Manhattan. <laughs> we say goodbye to Manhattan for now. We will be back there again before the year is out, I believe December, but that... Even before that. You think so? Oh, we yeah. do one week in uh, the Yeah, we of... get a little cheat week. Yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. Yeah. But for now, we say goodbye to the borough of Manhattan and hello to the borough of Staten Island. That's right, hello. Hello. So thanks so much for listening in this quick one. I hope you enjoyed. Please uh, do a like, do a subscribe, all those things. And we'll catch you next week. Take care for now. Bye. Bye.